bright beauty every student matters hello everyone hope all of you are doing well i am surbhi and we are going to talk about the concepts of social stratification and social mobility today so starting with the concept of social stratification what does it mean how is it related in the society how does it work in the society let's start with the meaning of the word stratification now when you talk about the term stratification it is either the classification or the division of resources into different strata that is what the term strat stratification means now when we talk about the term social stratification it obviously is seen in the societal terms and means the unequal distribution of the societal resources that is the unequal distribution of power prestige and property is what is the definition or the meaning of the term social stratification now when you talk about prestige you would say it belongs to an individual when you talk about power you would say it belongs to an individual even if property it belongs to an individual now all of these things are the achieved statuses that you have is the achieved uh, achieved role that you perform according to that status it is not something you didn't you did not have the power in hand by birth it is something that you have taken up with obviously your personal efforts with obviously the way of your working and your actions and reactions that is what you have taken out from the society so all of this distribution of the societal resources because all of these are actually the societal resources societal resources meaning the society's resources you we did not have all of this in our hand we did not have would do we still do not have it as something that we personally own my power or my prestige will be nothing if it is not in comparison or if it is not in the bigger unit of the society it is the hierarchical terms or it is the kind of prestige it is the kind of respect that i get from the society or from the members of the society and that is how i am able to enjoy that unless and until it is done or it is seen as a whole unit of society in isolation or individually it has no value involved or it has no value per se so that is why it is the societal resources it is society's resource that obviously are unequally divided your property is unequally divided your prestige your power all of these are unequally divided and that is what is referred to as social stratification so the unequal division of the societal resources is termed as social stratification now there are in inequalities between people unequal distribution of wealth is there unequal distribution of property power and prestige is there that we do see and that we do witness in a country like india as well which has such huge diversity wherein we are so diverse that we do face we do see that even if our, if our, if our gdp is growing at a very great pace which but we still have people who are below poverty line so that is what a, they talk about or further on when you talk about some of these sociologists or and who have talked about society from an economical perspective have talked about this is one concept of the gap being increasing it the gap increasing in the way the the richer ones are getting richer or the wealthier ones are getting wealthier and the poorer ones are getting poorer because it is seen in comparison to each other so the gap the economical gap that you see the power gap that we see the prestige gap that we see the wealth gap that we see is increasing because we have people who have already wealth and are acquiring more and more and more of it 
whereas we have people who are poor and are not able to acquire the wealth which can take them a little above in the economical strata or in the economical hierarchy now such inequalities indicate inequalities in access to resources opportunities and rewards not everyone is able to access the kind of education that you people are accessing not everyone is able to access the kind of resources that we are able to access be it electricity be it petrol be it um, you know water all of these things not everyone is able to access that not everyone is given that chance to access all of these resources owing to the inequalities that we have in the society and because of that and because of all of this situation the social situation that exists we face or we have this concept of social stratification still prevalent in our society they say that these inequalities divide people in a society into different levels or strata so i have been higher up using the hierarchy term here i which is technically a strata which is the which is it which hierarchy majorly is a vertical hierarchy wherein strata at times can be a horizontal sphere as well wherein one a uh, group is here the other ones here the third ones here however hierarchy has majorly the upper and the lower ranks i mean like you know the the vertical zone of any of these spheres of ranks no uh, uh, roles uh, prestige power all of it involved so these inequalities divide people if in a society into different levels or strata such a division of society is known as social stratification now even if you talk about their stratas now even if like i was explaining you that this is the meaning of the term strata where in you have the division it is generally not a very simple division or not a very leveled division it is seen as at a upper or a lower pace it is it might not be very very evident like a hierarchical situation but the 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 division or the differences in the position of the people are very very evidently seen and are very very evidently witnessed so when you talk about summarizing the definition of the term social stratification it means that it is the division of the society into strata or layers whose occupants have unequal access of social opportunities and rewards very very important for you to people to understand what all are the key points in here you do have the division of the society the society is being divided so you have the division of the society in stratas or layers you have one layer one one kind of you know division under the other one or the over the other one so it is a layered structure whose occupants obviously have unequal access to the social opportunities and rewards and hence is this is what is known as social stratification you do not have the access of the education you you do not have the access of that much amount for your child to pay to get that a kind of education that some of some of the people might aspire for some of people might want for their children that is what and because of the child not having that kind of an education they might not be able or they might not be in a state to have or to to get certain opportunities in life and hence get certain rewards in life so this is how all of it is very very majorly connected this is how all of these things that we have talked about or all the aspects of society for for that matter are connected when you do not have an access of the resources 
for here for example we take money you do not get the access to the opportunity that may be in the form of studying in a very well established school and that might lead to the lack of resources or that might lead to the lack of rewards that may be in form of employment or maybe in form of the desirable um, employment so that is how all of these things are connected now social stratification if it is such a huge term cannot just be one particular entity it has attributes to it so you have attributes of social stratification what are these starting with it is the division of the society into the strata some of which are considered higher and others are considered low so this is what i have just talked about before as well here in you have this particular structure here in you have this particular let's say this is a proper society you have some of the groups which are present here some of the groups which are present here some are present here and some even at the top as well now when you have this access or when you have this division in the society that is what is one of the attributes of social stratification wherein people do have strat stratas people do have differences and these differences are making you or are considered higher or lower differences as well moving ahead it is based on social differentiation or the assignment of different positions to individuals again it is based on social differentiation there is differentiation going on you are assigned certain positions different positions to different people now such positions are ranked that is some are considered higher and enjoy bigger and greater privileges and rewards and uh, power and on the other hand there are the ones which are considered lower as well so when you talk about you know when you talk about our own society when you talk about our own society wherein you do have a lot of people involved in different spheres of occupation you do see that all of it is divided in very structured layers and you do see and you do witness that all of it has different prestige different power different rewards different ranks attached to it and that is again an aspect of social stratification this is one of the attributes of social stratification now based on that it implore it implies social inequalities when you have this division when you have uh, this kind of under, when you have this kind of a structure where in it is seen that it is divided you do do have inequalities present in there you do witness that okay this is not an equal and a smoothly straight line of a society where everyone is at this particular line only you have someone going up you have someone going down it is like a structure where in someone at the higher position is seen with regard or with consideration to someone at the lower position so that is what is inculcating or that is what is kind of in kind of info re, reinforcing the whole aspect of social inequalities here now these social inequalities again are with respect to wealth power and prestige so the kind of position that you hold the kind of prestige that you hold the kind of power that you hold the kind of wealth that you have all of it is connected and all of it goes one I, I, and all of it goes in relation to each other now this is something which is not just in india it is universal it is found everywhere even when you talk about animals even when you talk about birds even when you talk about plants for that matter even when you talk about the whole darwin's theory of survival of the fittest these things are witnessed 
there are some of the animals who are at a higher rank and who have higher prestige and power attached to themselves however there are some animals which are at a lower rank and have some kind of lower prestige or power attached to themselves within a group as well it happens that one lion has that kind of a power to kind of hold the other or to kind of guide the other lions are also so this is because every society there are social differentiations and social inequalities because every society has social inequalities and because every society has social differentiations that is why this universality or you you know this universal character or the so the the universal character of social stratification exists so moving to the next aspect is the differences that we see be between differentiation inequality and stratification what is all of these three terms mean what or how are these different from each other we will be talking about it so basically differentiation is universalistic in nature when you talk about the term differentiation when you talk about uh, the uh, the the definition of differentiation it is universalistic in nature it is present everywhere it is something that you can see in every aspect or every sphere of the society now what is it dif basically difference by itself does not imply that one group or individual is superior to the other or that the one or it is that you know that one enjoys more privileges than the other one it does not mean here it does not imply differentiation does not mean that one person or one group is having a higher position than the other person differentiation in simple words just mean in equal just mean the differences which are being present out there here in they say in other words different different difference does not necessarily imply ranking or inequalities as well it just imply the differences okay you are a for very very small you know uh, as a very very uh, small example we may take you are a man or you are a man and i am a woman that can be a part of differentiation as well so here in this is very very clear that differentiation does not imply any kind of ranking or any kind of inequality and also it shows the diversity exists it shows that the diversity exists diversity exists in terms of sex in terms of caste in terms of class you have people being differentiated on the on the basis of class you have people being differentiated on the basis of caste on the basis of sex all of these things come up to the point wherein they say that okay diversity exists and because of the existence of the diversity is is the existence of the differentiation it has nothing to do with the hierarchical form or with the ranking with the proper inequalities and the privileges of one another now it is is they say thus by difference we mean that there is the existence of certain dissimilarities between the objects under consideration so you have like i was talking about men and women you have the differences in the objects in the existence of certain uh, there are some uh, dissimilarities that are being present in here even if you talk about let's say you know uh, an indian or an australian it is not that i am trying to compare the indian or an australian 
or even if you talk about a hindu or you talk about a sikh it is not that that i'm trying to compare these two i am just trying to make a point that there are dissimilarities that exist which are often complementary as well when you talk about the dissimilarities and when you talk about the uh, complementary dissimilarities it means men and women both are different both are different in biological composition but are complementary on the basis of the aspect of reproduction that is how the process of differentiation is explained that is how it is being said that oh both of these are complement they are two different entities no doubt in that even if it is biologically dif different even if they are biologically different these are two different entities but they do have opposition but they do have a complementary relation with each other here in they talk about the sphere or here in they talk about the uh, they talk about another example they take another example that is of weavers and carpenter now when you talk about weavers and carpenters these are two different units or these are two different groups but are dependent upon each other they are majorly majorly dependent upon each other the kind of products or the kind of objects that are being made by the carpenter are being used by the weavers to weave and exactly in the same way whatever the weavers are weaving be it shawls be it any of the other clothing that is how carpenters are dependent on them for getting the uh, resources for getting the clothing for get, for getting the things that they are manufacturing it is something very very similar to our relationship as well me being a teacher you being a student we are different entities we generally are of different age groups we are generally not having a very similar mindset on certain aspects we have we are different in a lot of spheres but the kind of interaction that we have this describes that we are complementing each other by even being by, by even by being different even by being in a sphere wherein we have individual identities which are not similar which are not same which are not very similar but still our relationship is complementing obviously without a student a teacher can't exist and without a teacher a student can't exist because as a teacher i would need students to teach and as a student you would be needing someone be it even if you talk about home schooling even if you talk about schooling which are done in um, you know an uh, in not really a formal kind of a schooling and informal schooling there also you need a guide you need a supporter you need someone who is there to guide you in the aspects of learning and that is what makes the person equivalent to a teacher and that is how you see the complementing relationships between the two happening or taking place moving ahead by inequality inequality means or we imply a distribution of privileges and resources as a conse consequence of which some are more privileged and the others are not so when we talk about inequality now that is where we talk about the distribution of the privileges because of which there are some of those people who are the privileged lot and the others who are not the privileged lot some under ha some have under their control more resources than others which results in the ranking of the people and their groups again talking about wealth again talking about power you have this inequality of caste of class of gender as well wherein 
you see that you, the other group or the other part of the society is having more privileges is having more more resources as acquiring more resources than the other one and that is how you are able to witness the inequality present in there moving on to the term social stratification it refers to the social inequality you do have the social inequality being present here it is defined by the division of society into strata we have discussed about it we have talked about it that it is defined of the division of the society within strata now in human society there is unequal distribution of privileges across strata however in other words we can say that there are layers of society the layers of the society are ranked you have very 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 easy example that you would be able to understand and we will be discussing it further in the chapter is the caste system that is prevalent in india you have uh, the brahmins you have the kshatriyas you have the shudras you have so you have the all of these things being distinguished all of these three layers of the society all of these four layers of the society being distinguished being separated the brahmins being separated by the shudras and very evidently very evidently you get this feeling that there is the that you know that there is a low the lower strata or shudras being taken over by the higher strata of brahmins it is like layers like they said you have at the uppermost layer the brahmins and you see at the innermost layer as the shudras and that is what is a part of the social stratification those imply higher um, occupying higher positions are more privileged than those who occupy the lower positions again talking about from this aspect the ones who have the higher position are having more privileges are considered more privileged than the ones who are having the lower strata or are belonging to the lower strata or the layer of the society now social stratification does not refer to all types of social inequalities very very interesting for you to note social inequalities may be there in a lot of spheres but social stratification for example we even talked about gender age groups all kind of inequalities which are there now social stratification does not take into account all the differences which are there as a part of the social inequality so not only between the groups in terms of not only between the groups in terms of the amount of power also between the members of different sex and age groups so social inequality like we have talked about before here as well it is not just on prestige and wealth it is also on gender it is also on age it is also on caste and class as well whereas you see that social stratification is not regarded when it comes to the inequalities between men and women or between the different age groups social stratification has to majorly majorly do with the aspects of the socialization with the aspects of the social sphere that we talked about or the social structure that we talked about in the previous chapter as well so all of those things are related and wealth power prestige which are some things that are not innate again you know which are some things which are not your ascribed status again 
social stratification does not take into account the ascribed status social the 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 things that are coming under or the images or the uh, the kind of factors that are coming under social uh, uh, coming under the ascribed status it is majorly majorly seen that whatever the achieved status is is of the people in the society and whatever the differences in the achieved status is of the people in the society comes under the aspect of social stratification now social stratification is a type of social inequality we have talked about it it is not just merely an inequality it is a social inequality it refers to the presence of social groups which are ranked one above the other usually with the respect to the amount of power wealth and prestige their members possess these three are some things that we have been talking about power prestige and wealth again all of these three being the achieved statuses or achieve these are all the achieved aspects social stratification means it refers to the presence of social groups which are ranked which are ranked in a structure in a layered form one above the another and usually have the aspect or the amount of uh, um, power wealth and prestige that the members out there possess also those who belong to the stratum the stratas that means different stratas like a group usually share a set of common sentiments and interests if you talk about wealthy people majority of them have a kind of shared ideas or a kind of shared interests and sentiments that they are present also share a similar style of life that will that will distinguish them from the other members of the social layers a lot of times we talk about oh he looks like a person from a higher background or a higher uh, or, or a high class or rather at times we even talk about oh he looks like a person from a middle class background or a lower class background because we have taken that stereotypical sense in ourselves that there are certain set of or certain style of life that these people possess and that these people have that is what we are judging them upon on all of these bases is the ex explanation of social stratification there now social stratification also has major two types so we have open stratification and we have the concept of closed stratification now what is open stratification so when the social stratification is elastic when it is possible for an individual to improve on it or to lose his status or position and may move to a higher or a lower stratum is what is known as open stratification so you have the concept or you have the freedom of social mobility there mobility meaning movement and social mobility as in you can move from one strata to the another strata there is this loose end there is this perforated walls which is having the uh, the which is giving you an option of movement from one strata to another now this option is not something that oh i feel like doing it there are a lot of uh, you know there are a lot of characteristics that you have to follow from while you're moving from one strata to the other one so if you fulfill all of those if you fulfill those requirements is when you have the uh, ability or when you get that zone or when you get that permission to move to the other strata one of the very major example that they have taken is the class system like i have talked about it again it has to do with the achieved status 
I have discussed about it. Here in if you talk about your class system, it is to do with your economy. It is to do with your wealth. It is to do with your property. Now with your personal efforts, with all your personal efforts, you may take into consideration or you may reach a position wherein you are able to increase your status or position in the society with respect to all of this and hence move from one strata to another. That is why and that is how the class system becomes a, a social, a, an open stratification in the nation or in the society. Now moving to uh, how and you know moving to how can it be lowered down for example you have someone from a very wealthy background and you have someone who is very rich belonging to the higher economy strata but because of some reasons the business went out because of some uh, reasons the whole economy is going down that is how you are moving from the low the higher strata to the lower strata now again all of these things are allowing or all of these things have certain requirements to it because if you have the same wealth if you have the same property if you have the same amount of economical status that is not which will allow you to move from one strata to another it is just either the loss or the gain of certain accommodi accommodities or the or wealth or uh, you know any of the economical status which is in turn giving you a rise in the status or the position and hence rise or downfall rise or downfall in the position or the status and hence you move from one strata to another and that is what is known as the open stratification Moving to the concept of closed stratification. Now, when we talk about closed stratification, it is rigid. It is where an individual can not move from one layer to the other one. Hence, there is no social mobility involved or a very limited, very, very limited social mobility involved. An example of this they have taken is the caste system. Again, talking about the ascribed status. Now, in sociology, you would be saying and you would be seeing, witnessing that things are related. Obviously, it is about society, right? It is about one, like talking about it is about one human body. Wherein you do have relations in the aspects wherein you do have your digestion is related to excretion. It's how related to somehow to the concept of, um, you know, respiration. It is related to other aspects as well. That means, uh, and similarly, in the society, in the social sphere also, things are related. So, your status is related to prestige, it is related to power that you hold, it is related to the roles that you play, it is related to the norms that you follow. All of these things and hence, all of this is related to the stratification which is there. And hence, here I am trying to make it relatable for you people to understand it in a better way and to be able to relate it in a much broader way. So, this is something as in ascribed status, something that we have talked about, the caste system found in India. You do have very rigid spheres, you do have very rigid boundaries. You do not, you are not really freely allowed to be, uh, you know, a Brahmin today and a Kshatriya tomorrow and maybe a Vaishya in uh, next month or a Shudra in some time. So, it is very, very rigid. You are born into it, you stay into it. It is very, very limited. It is very, very limited uh, that brings the changes or that allows you very limited aspect that allows you to change or to shift or to have social mobility involved and hence it is one of the closed stratification wherein you have rigid boundaries here and you are very rarely minimalist minimalistically involved or allowed to move from one strata to other.